you want to see something cool? Uh, Karim! Hi! This video is about to start! Hey, thanks, Duck! Don't forget to subscribe! Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Princess Light Light, and this is my partner Pikachu. Pikachu! Call me Coco. I am the Mermaid Princess of the South Pacific Ocean. My name is Karen. I am the Mermaid Princess of the Antarctic Ocean. My name is Noelle, and I am the Mermaid Princess of the Arctic Ocean. I am the pretty Agarian who fights for love and for courage. I am Sailor Jupiter. I'll feel you regret. It'll leave you numb. My name is Sarasa. I am Ichi's sister. Hey, don't forget about me. I'm Roka. And I am Sarasa's sister-in-law. My name is Kisosoma. The animal in the zodiac that I symbolize is the tiger. Call me Hirosoma. The animal that symbolizes the zodiac is the sheep, and that is me. A fine pleasure to meet you. My name is Kotoko. My name is Amu Hinamori. I can transform into Amulet Heart, Amulet Spade, Amulet Clover, Amulet Diamond, Amulet Angel, Amulet Devil, and Amulet Fortune. Hello, my name is Pudia. I can transform into Iris Heart. My name is Vert. I can transform into Green Heart. I am Nico Robin, a treasure hunter. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Kami. I am Ochako Uraka. Let's go! Hey, hey! Nice to meet you! Call me Nejere Haro! I am Itsuka Kendo. Pleasure to meet you. What's up? I'm Black Star! Hi there, it's Kami. I'm Nozomi. It's a pleasure to meet you. Call me Mavis. I'm pleased to meet you. I am the head of the Furude family, Rika Furude. I am Kaname Chidori. It's a pleasure. My name is Hestia. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi there, I'm Machi. Nice to meet you. I am called Rola. Be grateful, I'm not giving you any punishment. I am La Pucelle. Pleased to meet you. You can call me Sister Nana. Nice to meet you. I'm Rachel. Great to meet you. My name is Snow White. Pleasure to meet you. About us, I'm Nagisa One. And I'm Nagisa Two. What's up? I'm Boruto. It's a pleasure. My name is Hikaru Shido. I represent the element of fire. My name is Fu Hoji. And I represent the element of wind. I'm Umi Ryuzaki. And I represent the element of water. Hi, I'm Happy. I'm an Exceed from Extalia. And a member of the Fairy Tale Guild. Good day, I'm Carla. I am an Exceed as well. And. We are also in the Fairy Tale Guild. Hey there, I'm Wendy Marvel. I'm a Sky Dragon Slayer. My name is Romeo Combolt. I'm the only son of Fairy Tale's mage, Macau Combolt. And I'm a mage of the Fairy Tale Guild. <laughs> I'm Hanon Hosho. I am the Mermaid Princess of the South Atlantic Ocean. Glad to meet you. I'm Rina Toyn, and I am the Princess of the North Atlantic Ocean. Hiya, I'm Manatsu. It's a pleasure. Hi, I'm Ari. Nice to meet you. Call me Pony Sumotori. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Denki, and I'm the handsome one. I am Jaume. It's a pleasure. Hello, I'm down. Hey, I'm Julia. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Nayuki. Nice to meet you. I'm Hanyu for the day. And I'm Ayu Tsukimiya. Nice to meet you. My name is Lucas Klein, everyone. And this is my friend Haro. Ada, that's you too. I am glad to make your acquaintance. I am Sarada. My name is Kotome Ichinose. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'll promise to do my best on my violin. I am Yukine. It's nice to meet you. I am Pikachu Popstar. My songs will reach out to all of you. Pikachu PhD is in the house. My prescription? Knockout. Hi, I'm Rena Ryuku. You look so cute. I want to take you home with me. I am called Alpha Five. It is a great pleasure to make your acquaintance. They often call me Sayuri. Nice to meet you. I am Kaori. Please don't upset me. Futaba Sakura here. Nice to meet you. I'm Taleta. Nice to meet you. I am Melissa Shield. Pleased to make your acquaintance. And I am Jasmine, leader of the Alvine City Gym. Pleased to meet you. Hello, I'm Toru Haka Gurley, the Invisible Girl. Let's get started. With lots of
Disney Pictures live action remake is going strong to people or on two different sides. None can be said about Kim Possible 2019. Many fans who grew up with the original Disney Channel classic in 2002 seem to loathe the live action remake due to Kim's personality change and her being weak. Now fans are mad as hell, similar to what happened to 4Kids Entertainment and the Pokemon Company International in 2005. Back then, Pokemon the series popularity was a decline in the states following Emerald's release. In this video, we will go over why Kimberly Ann Possible was treated like shit, and we'll go over how the character was treated like crap, and finally, to make sure this will never, ever happen again. And before we begin... Before we begin, we ask that the information you hear cannot be independently verified, as this must be treated as rumor, gossip, or wishful thinking. Much or some of what you hear has to be taken with a grain of salt. With the mandatory health warning out of the way provided by Midnight's Edge, let's dive into what we have learned. According to MiraHaze.org, Kimberly Ann Possible was flanderized from a badass spy as well to a caring and loving friend to an attention-seeking Mary Sue who gets jealous and pretty much holds the petty grudge at Athena for being more popular at school and being a better spy, which goes against her character in the show, and on that topic, she cares more about validation than actually saving the world. For some reason, she is shown to be far weaker and less powerful than the original cartoon, all for the sake of making Athena seem more powerful in comparison. And granted, in the original cartoon, Kim at times just gets jealous at rivals like Lonnie Rockwaller, but not to the extent of holding grudges against her rivals or having her jealousy consume her to unhealthy degrees. And in that overcomes in a mature way and quickly moves on to more important tasks like saving the world. Unlike this live-action counterpart of hers, she does so many unnecessary flips and backflips. Does she really need to do a backflip just to pick paper off the ground? Hotspot's profession was changed from cheerleading to soccer, which doesn't make any sense considering how many backflips she does. And the cheerleading is what gave Kim her acrobatic abilities. And not to mention that cheerleading is one of her most iconic and defining characteristics in the original cartoon. Not to mention that she breaks the fourth wall, which alone is out of place for a show like Kim Possible, and criticizes her iconic crop top and cargo pants outfit from the animated series while saying it's too cartoony. Despite being the original design from the source material. And here's a word of hypocrisy. Despite her claim that she's wearing her iconic top, crop top and cargo pants from the animated series, regularly making the look cartoony, yet she still wears the same mission outfit on a regular basis. She seems to overuse the grappling gun, unlike the show, where she would have at least used a variety of gadgets so much to the point that the grappling gun is the only gadget she's ever got, despite that it is revealed in her room, that she does have a variety of gadgets. Sadie Stanley did a poor job at playing her, as she does not feel like Kim Possible, but she feels more like a random girl who happens to have red hair and calls herself Kim Possible. And on top of that, Sadie looks way too young for the role. But she made Kim Possible more like a middle school teenage girl than a high school teenage girl. And she is treated like a butt monkey punching bag since Athena became so much happier and likable. And speaking of which, she is much like Lily from Smile Pretty Cure and Don Bluth's Thumbelina. She cried who cried five times. Even though Usagi cried more in Sailor Moon Classic. We're not making that up, it's true. Hey! Is it really so out of the ordinary that I'm making sense? I mean, why is everyone so mean to me? Such a loud mouth. In which I might add, not only it gets really worse, but... It's fucking annoying, no? You could say that, Foz. But after a while, it goes completely against her character in the show and it makes her seem more weak and vulnerable, the worst way possible. I missed the part where that's my problem. She is very unpunctual, as she's often late for class for unknown reasons, even with the help of her grappling gun. And for some strange reason, she is shown to be actually deathly afraid of electric eels. While in the episode Rufus of Id Show of the original cartoon, electric eels barely even frighten her anyway. But the good part is that despite being an attention seeker, she is not an overpowered person, but her character went in the opposite direction by giving her more glaring flaws and a more emotional approach due to her character, 
but the amount of making Kim less perfect and more flawed and more emotional approach to the character in live action has potential as a decent protagonist and heroine in an attempt to make her character more reluctable to a gar target audience of children and preteens, but sadly this however backfired and sad it sadly ex executed poorly at the cost of severely dialing down the most of her strengths and qualities in the process. So in short, she's not like Ray Skywalker or Brie Larson. Thanks for watching, everybody! What do you think? If you appreciate it, please be sure to super smash that like button, and also be sure to follow my social media platforms in the description below, and Team Lifelike's fandom channels. And be sure to follow my Instagram at Pikachu and Sonic222 and my DeviantArt. Please be sure to leave a comment below and give us your open-minded thoughts and we here at Team Lifelights Fandubs do not condone harassment or trolls aloud. Or otherwise, Red Hullet from Comedy Central's The Red and Candy Show will hunt you down to the ends of the Shadow Realm. Please be sure to subscribe to our channels and click the notification bell. You'll never miss a video the second it goes live on YouTube and Google. Smartphone users, please be sure to press the button down there. And PC and laptop users, please be sure to click the subscribe button. Keep that in mind, and we'll see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye! <laughs>